Once upon a time, a widower lived in a fine house with his daughter, Cinderella. He loved his daughter very much, but he wanted her to have a mother's care. So he married Lady Tremaine, a woman who had two young daughters. Sadly, the gentleman died soon after. Cinderella discovered that her stepmother was cold, cruel, and bitterly jealous of Cinderella's charm and beauty. As the years passed, Cinderella's stepmother spoiled her two mean daughters. Anastasia and Drizella slept in large, lovely bedrooms, but Cinderella was given a tiny room in the attic. Poor Cinderella was forced to do all... As the years passed, Cinderella's stepmother spoiled her two mean daughters. Anastasia and Drizella slept in large, lovely bedrooms, but Cinderella was given a tiny room in the attic. Poor Cinderella was forced to do all the laundry, serve all the meals, and clean the house. Still, Cinderella remained kind and gentle. All of the animals loved her. The birds sang to her, and the mice were always there to keep her company. She even made tiny clothes for them. One morning, Cinderella stood at the window in her tiny room. She dreamed of one day wearing a beautiful gown and dancing at a fancy ball. Someday my dreams will come true, Cinderella said to herself. Meanwhile, the king had his own troubles. He wanted his son to marry right away. But the prince wanted to wait for the girl of his dreams. The king had an idea. He told the Grand Duke they would have a ball and invite all the young women in the kingdom. The royal invitations were delivered that very day. As their mother read the news of the ball aloud, Anastasia and Drizella jumped with excitement. Cinderella asked if she could go to the ball too. You may go, said her stepmother sternly, if you get all of your work done and if you can find something suitable to wear. Cinderella ran to her room and found an old ball gown that had belonged to her mother. Maybe it's a little old-fashioned, but I'll fix that, she thought. First, she had chores to do, though. Cinderella worked quickly, but as soon as she finished one task, she was given another. It was eight o'clock when Cinderella finally went back to her room, tired and sad. There was no time left to finish her dress. But there was a surprise waiting in the attic. Cinderella's... Cinderella dressed and hurried downstairs. 
when Anastasia and Drizella saw her, they flew into a jealous fit. They ripped Just still relic free now there's the looking Glass slippers on her tiny feet. Why, it's like a wonderful dream come true, Cinderella said with a sigh. Yes, my child, but you'll have only till midnight, cautioned the fairy godmother. On the stroke of twelve, the spell will be broken and everything will be as it was before. Cinderella was whisked away to the palace. When she entered the ballroom, the prince rushed over and asked her to dance. Cinderella smiled and took his hand, never guessing that he was the prince. They danced all night, and anyone could see that they were falling in love. But Cinderella had lost track of time. It was nearly midnight. Goodbye, she said to the prince as she hurried away. Both the prince and the Grand Duke tried to stop her, but Cinderella ran off, losing a glass slipper along the way. Just beyond the palace gates, at the last stroke of midnight, the spell was broken. All was as it had been before. All, that is, except for the tiny glass slipper on Cinderella's foot. She took the slipper off and carried it home. The next morning, Lady Tremaine told her daughters that the Grand Duke was searching for the girl who lost the glass slipper. Whoever fit the slipper perfectly would marry the prince. Lady Tremaine decided that Cinderella must not have the chance to try on the slipper. She quickly locked the girl in her room. But Cinderella wasn't locked in for long. The mice stole the key and slipped it under Cinderella's door. Meanwhile, Anastasia and Drizella tried to force their big feet into the tiny slipper, but it was no use. Just as the Grand Duke was about to leave, Cinderella appeared at the top of the stairs. May I try it on? she asked. The footman carried the slipper toward Cinderella, but her stepmother tripped him. The glass slipper crashed to the floor, shattering into a thousand pieces.
If it would help, I have the other slipper, Cinderella said with a smile. She pulled the glass slipper from her pocket. The Grand Duke knelt before Cinderella and eased the slipper onto her dainty foot. It was a perfect fit. Soon, Cinderella and the prince were married, to the delight of the entire kingdom. The royal couple lived happily ever after. The End <laughs>